All right, first thing off here is I'm using uh, Tamiya X1 Gloss Black. This is acrylic. Um, I don't have access to lacquer or enamel uh, on me. Could get lacquer, but I find that their acrylic gloss is very, very nice. Uh, you can see I've thinned, it, I've thinned it quite a bit, and I'm doing very, very small little layers. I've thinned it with a lacquer thinner, and that helps it to dry harder and faster, which is something I really wanted on this acrylic. Um, so the other thing that's going to do is it, as it dries harder, and uh, as I mentioned, it's in just a very small burst, that is helping it to hopefully dry quicker and it actually worked out pretty darn well and it's all about making these nice small little layers and uh, gradually building up to this nice gloss that it actually eventually brings now I'm not sure what the science behind having a gloss backing for silver colors is um, but it does work very very well uh, the instructions do say that you don't need it but um, it looks a lot better and it, it actually adheres a lot better to the gloss um, backing. So definitely recommend that if you're using these paints. And uh, so yeah, here you're just seeing more and more small little spurts and it was a bit of a labor process, um, but you'll get very, very good results in the end. So it's very, very, very happy with this and it dried very quickly so I was able to uh, airbrush the silver on right away the next color I've got on here is the Duraluminum this is again uh, this is the first time I used that uh, Vallejo metal air color and uh, I was hoping for something just slightly darker not that obnoxious not very metallic gray gunmetal type color and I was very very happy uh, with this color. I highly recommend this to anyone that wants to use it for basically the same thing that I did is um, multi-shading the panel lines. It's quite noticeable um, without being too dominant which is again what I really wanted. I wanted them to be just very subtly all together. It's definitely a color I'm going to be using again in the near future. So I was really really happy with this. Um, these colors are pre-thinned which is something I personally don't like. I find them to be a bit too thin for my own liking. Um, again, it's just my own preference. They are still usable, however I would recommend using a lower pressure on these, uh, which is what I did. I had my little um, nozzle uh, valve that I attached to my airbrush from Tamiya, and um, yeah, I just went ahead, lowered that down, Now came time for my next color here. I wanted to add three layers, and this is chrome. I was hoping for something really, really bright. Now, this was also partly a test, and I'm gonna explain this a bit more later on. Um, I painted it on the silver. I was wondering if you could just paint it on the silver and see how it would react. Um, it did look very, very nice, and I was quite happy with it, but not as happy as I wish uh, I would have been had I painted it over a gloss black. Do it over something gloss black, um, acrylic, enamel lacquer, your choice, but um, don't paint it over itself. It does work, but I did not end up getting that very nice sheen that I was hoping for, but in the end, I think it looked very, very nice once you saw all the three colors sitting together there. All right, uh, I just want to show this. This is that chrome, and it is shiny. It's it's very shiny, but not very um, reflective-y. Um, it doesn't really have that nice reflectiveness that chrome has, but it's pretty darn awesome. Um, I was going to use this on another project, but I don't know. I think it's too bright. I don't know. I'll try it if I don't like it. Um, I also wanted to try this as part of the test is to spray this on just the plastic. Um, I want to know how it would work just painting it over silver. Not good. Paint it over black. Gloss black paint, guys. So I made this hook. It doesn't come with a tail hook, so I, I've, I've, I've made one. 
and all I did is I took some, this is tinned copper wire, it's for soldering, and all I did is I took it on an anvil and hit it with a hammer, but I hit it in a direction to flatten it out, and then I just bent it over, and so yeah, I can cut it shorter and have it sitting on the back here. I think I've got to bend it. Yeah, I think it needs to be kind of in a curved shape, and I might just sand down the edges a little bit. It's quite fat, and just thin it down a little bit more. Let me just have a look at the book. Uh, the book, the book, the book. Yeah, it's, I don't really have any good pictures of it. It seems like every picture of the tail hook is on the other side of the, of the plane. So it's a little, just a little curved. I don't even know how long it's supposed to be either. Hmm. Anyways, that's my hurdle. I'm going to glue this on. I'm going to clean the tail hook up. Glue it on. Um, I'm going to add some Mr. Metal Primer on it. And then I'm going to tape this up. The chrome. I'm going to tape that up and paint it black. And then I can excitingly paint the aluminum on there and I will be almost done painting oh, so close to being done I just then then all I have to do is just two areas I just have to do this top here and the uh, black on the nose so yeah I'm pretty excited and I did the tail but I left that in the other room and that came out really well I sanded it down really really smooth and then uh, yeah repainted it and uh, one little speck in the middle. <laughs> so I think that hopefully that will have leveled. I don't know. I'll go and check. But it's going coming along here, so I'm gonna go get this going and we can get back to painting. Alright, this is much more of a lengthy process before we add in the aluminum. This is again just more gloss black. Um you can see I've thinned it down quite a bit. Something I was just doing a bit of research actually today on um, how to get a better shine out of metallic colors and I'm definitely going to try this out on a, on a future project um, but when you want something really really reflective and a particular shiny um, I learned that if you the more you thin down the paint um, so let's say about a 50-50 consistency um, the more of a shine that you can get out of the out of the gloss black and that will in the end and not just gloss black but any kind of gloss paint um, but that will help your uh, your model in the long run having that nice and brighter brighter color that you might be wanting so I was again I was very happy with this but to thin it down a bit more is something I think I'm going to do um, next time I get around to building something you know something like this I'll wait and see but again I was just very happy with this it's a very good base coat for the for the paint so Right, and here is the final layer. This is the aluminum. This is the one I had the most problems with and again it was because I was filming it on camera. I wanted to capture this on, on film and be able to show you guys but basically if I ever use this stuff again I'm, I'm never going to record it. Um, the easiest way I found for me personally you can go ahead and use this and find your own results but for me personally um, as I mentioned before, I found it very easy to put, or much easier rather, to airbrush this on a lower setting. Um, so to turn down the air pressure. Because um, the paint is very, very thin and high pressure, it just pools out everywhere. Um, the other thing I should have done with it is I should have done much lighter coats and taken a break. So you can see like right here, very, very light. Um, and yeah, of course here now I'm adding on a whole bunch extra, but just that very, very light layer that I had there initially um, is where I should have left the entire model, let it dry for 5-10 minutes, 
um, fill up my airbrush with more paint, come back, even waiting a little longer, not waiting a day or even an hour, because um, this stuff does try, dry pretty quickly. But it's all about adding those very, very light layers on there. And when I started adding the lighter layers, um, I was discovering that it had a much better radiance to the paint. Again, it is a bit tedious, but for me, from now on, that's how, basically how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do these very, very small layers. I was very impressed with the brightness and the intensity of just this aluminum here. It's a great looking color. So here you can see I've run out of paint, and <laughs> didn't have enough room, gotta go around the camera. Just three little drops there, that's all I needed. Um, possibly even one or two would have been much better. Again, just flush it out with some airbrush cleaner, leave the model alone for a little while, and then come back. It would have been much, much, much better. But beautiful color, beautiful paint, um, and for acrylic, um, I was very, very impressed by it. And uh, nothing bled through, amazingly, which was really cool. It's something I was a bit worried about because of how thin it was, but that never happened. So here we go. Okay, so some bad news. Yeah, um, paint bled all around this thing, the silver. Looks horrible. I was really upset about it. And then the tape left a mark on here, which I didn't think was going to happen. It left a print on here. Remember I did that with the Citroen all the time? I was so shocked. I think what's happening... Number one, I think it needs to dry longer, even though this is lacquer and this is just dry for like a day. I thought that would be enough. Let me just do a test here. Yeah, it's not dry all the way through. Interesting. Um... I think what happens is, I think that the uh, when it's not dry, and because the paint is, is venting through, putting the tape on top of that um, causes it to kind of, like, it, it, it kind of like reactivates the paint again. So it's still kind of sticky, but it, it's still, it's trying to dry, but it's like stuck there. So there's moisture from like the tape and from the paint itself, and that causes those prints. That's really what I think is going on. So I just used some Novus 2 and I just scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and I got rid of it. Thankfully. But I did end up damaging this tip here. I'm just going to repaint that with some uh, uh, enamel metallic silver. I'm just going to touch up with this. Screw it. I'm not... I'm not going to airbrush again. I'm so tired of airbrushing this stuff. It's so much work. It's worth it, but I'm just had enough <laughs> for right now. So anyways, here it is, guys. Here she is. What do you think of that? So a couple things I want to mention here um, is to paint this silver on kind of what you need to do with it. Now, this this paint is very nice. It's very, very nice paint. I like it a lot. But this was my own fault because I was in front of the camera and I wasn't focusing on this enough. Uh, light coats. Light, light coats. Paint like a very, very bare coat on there. Clean out your airbrush. Come back five, ten minutes later. Do it again. It's a, it's a stupid long process. Really, really is. But it's the best. It, it, if you just go at it slower, lower air pressure as well. Again, I don't like them because they're pre-mixed. Um, I wish I could thin them myself, but they're really nice. They are really, really nice. And I'm very, very pleased with this overall silver finish. So here we have that Duraluminum here. And you can see it there and there. Chrome is definitely brighter, but not as bright as I was hoping. I'm kind of like, I'm just going to stick with the aluminum uh, paint, because this was this was e actually a bit easier to airbrush on. I'm really happy with that. Really, really happy with that. And I don't know how well it's picking up my camera, but I can definitely see it. You remember I said that I was going to, I painted this that light gray, and then the nose, I was going to leave the color of the primer, 
um, I can definitely see the difference in the in the colors so that is that looks spectacular so what I'm gonna go do now I'm gonna coat the entire model in future and I'm gonna let it dry and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch it I might even do like two layers of future especially on the wings here because that's where the decals need to go so definitely gonna have more um, future on here of a gloss coat um, but I'm gonna leave it alone and then I'll paint the um, anti-glare panel on top I might even do that last yeah because it's actually shiny when you look at it like it it, it is glossy and I kind of want to I don't really want to dull it but I just I really want to protect it that's for sure but I'm really really happy with that and so I just want to show you guys really quick here I guess I could glue this on here technically and this one goes on here Ta-da! Oops! That look great Can't wait to have this thing done See it sitting on the shelf there Really had fun, really been having fun with this Getting the paints to work, yeah, that's been a bit difficult and uh, a good trial and error here, but I'm having, like I said, I'm having a lot of fun. There's the little tail hook in the back. See how that turned out? <laughs> Looks pretty good. Yeah, you can definitely see the chrome is different, but they're very close. And this is so hard to record. You just see how shiny it is. It's so shiny. I've never seen acrylic paint like this. This is incredible. So that's the plan. Time for a gloss coat and leave it alone for a while. So I got the decals on and I forgot to record it. I meant to and I got I just got so carried away with what I was doing. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, I forgot to do it. My bad. Um, actually, the deckling process went pretty well. I'd like to say that um, for one where these made 64, 68, these these decals still held up. Um, one here, you can see quite a bit of carrier film around them. Um, it's actually quite level, and I think I'm hoping with a gloss coat that'll go away. Um, but after that, I started trimming them very close to the details there. Um, the only one I had a problem with was this one here, and I've tried several solvents, but you can just see that little lip on it. Can't get rid of it. I tried, I tried, I tried. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, I'm just going to leave it and gloss it. And um, for the most part, yeah, again, for 60, 1964, they held up really, really well. I was quite surprised. Really glad I added in those... Um, Canadian rondelles, they look really really snappy. I'm quite happy with those especially they just kind of pop out when you look at them at a distance here They just look fantastic. I love them um, Again, those are canuckmodels.com and uh, Really just really happy with those um, So yeah for the decals like I said I just cut as close to them as I could and then I just dipped them in water for about Five seconds, usually basically so I could see the back of the paper um, absorbing enough water, and then I just lifted them up and placed them on a uh, paper towel until they were ready to go. Just move them. Worked quite well. Um, however, they did not like Microset. Is it Microset or Microsol? Yeah, Microset. This is funny. I used this because I wanted them to stick to the model better, right? But what ended up happening, this was really funny. I put the Microset down. I put the decal down and I'd try and press the water out from underneath it and they would just slide around. It's like this acted as some kind of weird grease and it just they just didn't want to stay still. It was quite funny. So I just leave them alone and put some microsol on them when I when I was done and that worked really well. Um, so again, I'm really happy with this. I'm going to go and give them a gloss coat and leave this alone for a while. For a day or so and I might do two gloss coats I'll see how uh, see how I feel see how they need it and um, 
yeah, then I'll just go ahead and paint that black stripe down the nose, the anti anti glare down the front. So I'm really looking forward to that. And yeah, again, I'm sorry I just didn't record it. I just forgot. And uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go do like all the wheels and smaller smaller assemblies right now. So that's my that's my goal right now. To go and do stuff like that. And like the I put on the uh, thruster in the back here. Just painted it metallic gray. I think it looks really good having that in the contrast. So I hope this is actually gluing. Yeah, there it is. I was a little worried it wasn't quite glue wasn't making contact with anything properly. It is. So that's about it. I'm getting close, very close to being done. I'm very, very excited. So I'm gonna go continue the work here. <laughs> 